Hello everyone. I'm here to tell you that I have a problem. I don't think it's really a me problem. I think it's a writers in general problem. And if you write at all, you probably know what this problem is, which is brand new shiny ideas just smack you in the face and say, hello, write me, forget everything else and write me. I do have enough, just barely enough self-control to not do the drop everything else part of drop everything else and write me. However, as you probably guessed by my little rant just there, a big shiny new idea has just come and knocked on my brain. I am not going to abandon my current projects, the two most important being the final edit of a fantasy novel that James and I are writing together, which, eee, final edit, man, it's great! coming along so well. And then I'm also about 35,000 words into yet another fantasy novel, this one a solo project. But Shiny new ideas? So yeah, I'm not going to drop all the other projects I'm writing, but I am going to start nurturing the shiny new idea alongside them. So I thought that this would actually be a really good and hopefully interesting for you guys opportunity to just bring you along on my writing process. I mean, most of it, as I'm sure every writing person knows, involves hunching over your computer, smashing your keyboard, going, eh, what's another word for red? Or maybe that's just me, I don't know. But, you know, I thought it would just be a really interesting chance to document everything from initial idea to finished product. I don't know yet whether this one's going to be a full novel or a novella, because the scene that smacked me in the head is, I think, approximately at the two-third mark of the book. Like, the start, it's the climactic scene at the start of the third act, probably. I say probably because I have a scene and, like, a couple of scenes on either side of it and nothing else. I'm working from the middle out, which is gonna be interesting. My shiny new idea is actually a very, very shiny old idea. So, um, from the ages of approximately uh, 12 to 16, I was writing the best, most awesome, dramatic, amazing, heartfelt, original, unique, epic fantasy. And that ain't ever gonna see the light of day. None of the fragments of that are ever gonna see the light of day. It was, shall we say, shit. However, I have been mining the good bits, the interesting bits, for current projects. To be honest, that's probably why this scene just popped back into my head and demanded to be written, because, well, I've been sort of thinking about other aspects from what used to be that same story, but also, forgive me if I am, like, shiny with sweat. I am filming this intro in January, so it's summer here, and it is very, very Anyway, not that that's got anything to do with this. This is even more rambly than usual because, to be honest with you, I'm actually kind of nervous. I don't really share much of my writing stuff, even though it is a massive part of my life. I'm normally like, finished works only. No one gets to see anything before finished works. And even then I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> I think everyone is. But since I've taken the opportunity to vlog my writing process, I thought I would actually be very, very brave and start by reading you the first draft of that one dramatic scene. So you don't get sick of my face, I'll probably like put up some nice stock video so you can see some nice stock video rather than me um, reading here. The second time Nera stumbled and fell, her tied hands leaving her unable to save herself from smashing into the muddy earth, Dane couldn't take it any longer. He helped her up, wincing as he noticed she now favoured her left leg, and kept a gentle hold of her rough hands. There has to be another way, he said. We can't do this to you. She tightened her fingers around his. There isn't, Nero replied, and we both know it. They did know it. Everyone had strategized for days to try and find an alternate plan to this one, risky as it was, but no one had found a solution that didn't end in him hand-delivering her to the man who wanted her dead. He would do it. There was too much at stake for Dan not to play his part. But it broke his heart to see her like this, bound and beaten, and to know that he couldn't help her. All he could do was play his role of proud captor delivering a prize bounty well enough that they could pull it off. 
Nero was shaking. Her fingers trembled against his, whether in fear or cold or pain, he couldn't tell. I'm scared, she admitted softly. Me too, he replied. A broken bark of laughter left her lips, surprising them both. She smiled wryly, the blood on her lips making the expression a mockery of her usual verve, but Dane still couldn't help but smile back, despite it all. No going back now, Nero said. We have to go forward. She squeezed his fingers hard enough to hurt, then let go abruptly. I'm glad it's you, she said, looking past him to their goal. I can be strong since it's you. Eee, so yeah, that was my dramatic scene. It's kind of... <clears throat> First draft, it'll probably get better. I mean, hopefully you loved it, but uh, I'm, like I say, this is a big thing for me. But I feel like it's kind of... Saying it's important feels like I'm just talking myself up too much, but I think it's cool. I I'd love to see other writers do this. I really, really would. So, hey, other writers with progress vlogs where you actually talk about your process and you're not just like, I wrote a thousand words today, but you actually give like details and feelings and snippets. I'd love that. If anyone knows people who do that, drop me links because that'd be cool. But yeah, anyway, um, now that I have like terrified myself with bearing my soul, I am going to go off, write some more, and I will update you sometime when I've got something more interesting to say about this project. This writing update is coming at you from my couch while I am in my nighty because I am freaking exhausted. Now, I'm exhausted for two reasons. One is because I was day drinking. The second is because I was day drinking because I was holding my first writing group, like in-person writing day. And it went really, really well. It was a fantastic day. And I did make some progress on this new, <laughs> new story, which is why I'm filming, filming an update. Though I was also a very good girl. In one of my other projects, I had some placeholders. I went through and replaced all of them, which I'd been meaning to do for about a year. And I also worked on the Core Haven, which is the one I'm working on with James. Core Haven sequel. I had a couple of scenes I was writing, did a bit on that. And then I did a few hundred words on my new thing, which word count wise, not too much, but the main sort of moral of the story is writing day with writing friends was absolutely amazing and totally gonna do it again. So progress is probably gonna be a bit faster than I thought it was. But yeah, for now I am going to go possibly drink more, but most likely just order some pizza and play some Minecraft. So uh, till next update, bye. All right, so it has been literally a week since the writing day. I've only written 450 words, which, I mean, depending on how you look at it, it's decent. You know what? I consider that decent, given that this is meant to be my back burner project. I have been working on my main projects, so, you know, <laughs> I haven't been slacking off too much. But I decided that since I'm kind of using YouTube to motivate me to work on this project, I was going to just throw on the camera, I'm also screen recording, and see how much... I can crack out in the next almost 20 minutes. So it's a little after 10 to 6 now. I'm going to stop at 10 past 6 and I'm just going to, it's first draft, I'm just going to smash out what I can, see what I can do. It is the evening I've been working all day and so I'm a bit, ugh, and I refuse to put on makeup or a nice shirt for you guys. So, uh, hello. But I did put my hair up instead of just in a plait, so appreciate it, babes. I promise I will not call you babes again. That just made me really uncomfortable. But anyway, anyway, I'm at 2,409 words in total on this project so far. And let's see, uh, 20 minutes, I should be able to, well, let's say 15 to be conservative, should be able to at least pop out another 300. So let's go. So yeah, what I'm doing here is I always read like a little bit and just make minor edits as I'm going. So even when I say first draft, it's like...
Captain Marvel mug. I, uh, it's not really a mug, it's like that big, but you know. We got it from the movies when we went to see that movie, and I drink a lot of water, and holy shit, it's six! Half my time's gone already, and I've written. Not even a hundred words. <laughs> to be fair, I was doing a lot of editing, but. A little longer than a few minutes later. See, I mean, look, I hope none of this comes across as a wanky, but I'm just talking about, well, look, I'm sharing my process. And my process is, a lot of the time, I don't know shit. I don't know much about my characters when I start. I don't know much about the world. I just add little bits in and then they spark me down a path of what I feel like doing. Because, like this one, I just wrote, you know, her head ached like she had, the word had, had drunk a whole bottle of mead the night before. Initially, I wrote wine because I, that's just one of my default. But then I'm like, eh, I'm not feeling it. So I changed it to mead. But then immediately, that's a piece of world building. That's a different culture. And I mean, obviously, I sort of, I try not to, like, exactly duplicate earth cultures into fantasy worlds but you always end up doing like you know this is pseudo england this is pseudo china it's kind of inevitable well not inevitable but it's fairly common and i don't think it's necessarily a bad thing um and i never try to do a direct copy i just sort of pick and choose aspects while trying to still remain culturally sensitive to a degree but like yeah that's what i'm just saying that on the whim decision to change wine to mead, wine to mead, bam, I've got a whole lot more about the forest clans than I did before. So, yeah, that's how I roll. I don't know shit when I write it. Oh, it's like if you've read Penny Trader over on um, the Cherry Bone Books Medium account, which if you haven't, you should. There's a link to the account in this description. Is um one thing I did there is um. I mean, James added one word, the word blue, to this, but just a random tidbit I threw in was that she goes, when Penny is narrating to Barnassus her life story, she's like, you know, you've heard of one about me and the blue dog, but did you know there were two, two geese and a priestess? I got no idea what that story is. I just was like, oh, dog, geese, priestess, and then James added blue to make the dog, like, to make it a noteworthy anecdote sort of thing. But yeah, I like throwing in details without knowing where they're going to end up. It, in a sense, I discover this as much as a reader does. And yes, I have control and can go back and edit, but I don't pre-plan very much. A few minutes later. I also have the tendency to repeat myself. So I'm just seeing if rustling in the undergrowth. Yep, see there, rustling in the undergrowth made her come alert. Down here, I was saying, a rustling in the undergrowth. Same phrase within two pages, within less than a thousand words. Um, here because oh no that's not nice no 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 uh, uh, uh the other one redo i was trying to get rid of the view thing yeah okay i hate that i just don't like having text and then like a huge blank page blank pages are mildly terrifying so here's another world building point so i'm like dane's coming in and given that he is going to be in a position of being like you know I, you know, these guys captured me and I escaped and captured her and I'm coming to you. He needs to look like one of the bad guys. But it's like, is he in a uniform or is it a fashion style or is it colors? You know what? I think it'll just be small mannerisms like hairstyles and stuff. That's probably easier. Is that? 
figured we were due for another writing update. With how I've been writing this story, it's kind of like the snowflake method, only rather than starting from an outline, a very brief outline, and working outwards from there, I'm starting from a scene and working outwards from there. So currently I actually have six chapters outlined. The outline is often just a single sentence, but four of those chapters I have actually written some of the content, and one of those four is actually a fully complete 3000 wordish chapter. So honestly, I think the method's working really well for me so far. And so with this method, which, I don't know, do we call it a reverse snowflake, a spiral? I'm, I'm really not quite sure what to call it. It doesn't even need a name, but by, by Rowley's snowflake method, as well as developing the plot from that central scene outwards, I'm also developing the characters, the world, and everything in it. So effectively now, I have a magic system. It's effectively... There is magic. Magic is channeled by runes or sigils, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to call them yet, which anyone, magically powered or not, can draw and you do channel the power. It's just some people can see it and feel it and control it more, but the key point is always the runes. And so because of that, like, the characters are going to have things like runes tattooed on them and stuff like that. And I think it's kind of cool. I'm liking this system so far. It's not how I normally do magic systems. It's a little harder than I normally do. It's still not a very much of a hard magic system to be honest, but hey! And then obviously the plot is developing. Not too much really. I mean the central point that I've got is still basically what I've told you guys before, which is the whole for the good guys to trick the bad guys they have to, you know, go in pretending to be a bad guy and a prisoner and then destroy everything from the inside. There's still not really much more than that. And honestly, the plot for this book is probably going to be mostly centered around that anyway. I'm always a fan, both when I'm writing and when I'm reading, about things where the plot isn't grand and convoluted. The plot is actually fairly straightforward, but what's important is how the characters develop and interact with said plot. And, speaking of characters, naturally the more I write, the more my three main characters are developing. So, because I haven't obviously given you a proper summary yet because I haven't had a proper summary to give. The three main characters in this story are twins, Tom and Nira, and Dayan, who is originally a bad guy converted to being a good guy. Exact details to be decided. So these three characters, um, broadly speaking, Nira is primarily the main character. It's in, in, in order of like main characterness, it's Nira, Dayan, Tom. But they are each going to have POV characters, um, not characters, chapters. And again, that's something I don't normally do. I don't like distinctly switching POV, but I'm doing it this time and we'll see how it goes. And um, as I'm writing, these characters are becoming more developed. I mean, I always am a sucker for badass chick being badass, and that's what Nira was to start with. But then I was thinking that in her backstory, no, she's always been... The quiet one, the shy one, the one who always wanted to just grow up, get married, have a farm and just live a normal boring life. Out of the two of them, Tom was always the one who was more adventurous, more academic, more... just more, <laughs> effectively. And I like switching that normal dynamic I have of badass chick on its head. I mean, don't get me wrong, Nira is still an absolute badass, but she's like a badass by circumstance, not by choice. And then Dayan, he's kind of the same, he's always been, he's, you know, the, the bad guy who has a change of heart, falls in love with the main chick. It's, he doesn't have that much of a personality yet beyond that, but it will come. That's what I'm enjoying about the method I'm taking with this is, I don't need to know shit. It, it, it will happen when it happens, and that's really how I enjoy working. So on that note, um, with things developing, as well as I've actually finally gotten to the point where that excerpt I read to you at the beginning has been linked in. So I've got one complete chapter, then the start of the next chapter, where that scene comes in about, you know, 500 words into the scene. And I've actually had to edit it, because obviously when I wrote it, it was a standalone scene, so it had a lot more exposition that isn't in place, isn't necessary anymore, and is in fact pretty redundant. So yeah, that's where we're at with the book currently. The book still doesn't have a title or anything like that to make this video easier. 
And I've also sort of thought, um, this is going to be an incredibly freaking long vlog, so I'm probably going to actually cut this into a series of vlogs. This is going to be a very long, ongoing video series, so sorry if you started this hoping for me to end up being like, oh, and here is my book, my little book that I'm holding. That's not going to happen. Welcome to the final update of this particular vlog. Like I said, writing this book's going to be a bit of a long process, so I figured may as well cut it here. Why here, you ask? Basically no reason. This video is going to be about half an hour long and I figured that's a sensible time to stop it. But if I want to pretend that I'm pre-planning things, it's because I've hit 11,000 words on this project. And I figure an, an update vlog every 10k sounds pretty reasonable. It's been three weeks since I filmed my last update and I'm really happy to have effectively doubled my word count in that time. I have not been this motivated and made this much consistent pro consistent progress on a project in a long time and I'm feeling really good about it. Before I go on to talk about the actual writing progress, there's a couple of sort of housekeeping matters I thought I should address. First of all, because I nearly always forget to do this, please like and comment and subscribe. Please. And also, like I said earlier in the video, if you know any other writers who vlog like this, I am really, really interested to sort of get a bit of an insight into other people's processes. So please drop me links in the comments to other people who do this sort of thing. Even if it's yourself, because I'm just, <laughs> I'm really, really into writing at the moment and I'd love to see what other people are doing. I also realized that if you're watching this when I upload it, I don't really have any legitimacy as an author necessarily in your mind. I don't have any books published, I'm not like some popular person on, I don't know, Reddit or somewhere <laughs> where you might read samplings of my work, I'm not a fan fiction writer or anything like that. So if you are watching this and going, oh well that all sounds well and good Rolly, but can you even write for shit? First of all, yes I can write for shit. Um, trust me, I, I know how to use like grammar and the correct words in most situations. But I want to take this opportunity to say, look at the description box, you'll see a bunch of links for Cherry Burn Books. That is the publishing company <laughs> that James and I, um, you know, post our work under. And we have completed a web serial called The Life and Crimes of Captain Penelope M. Traitor. You might have seen my previous videos on that topic. We filmed a trailer and I also filmed a behind the scenes video of making that trailer. Um, those are both on my channel. I'll put them either down there or up that side, I think they go somewhere. But most importantly, I'm saying please go and read that work. If you're thinking I'm talking a lot of talk, but I can't back it up. Well, who knows? Maybe in your opinion, I can't back it up. But if you want to trust that I can actually deliver something that is enjoyable and readable, go have a read of that web serial and hopefully you enjoy it. Now, mentioning Penny Trader brings me to another thing that I wanted to chat about in this vlog quickly, which is the fact that even though I was referring to that as my work, it was actually a collaborative work with my husband James, and another project that's in the work, um, called Corehaven, I think I mentioned it earlier in the video, is also a collaboration with James. And I did want to take an opportunity in this vlog to just give him a little shout out for being an excellent collaborator. So obviously, in those works, it's pretty much a full proper collaboration, he's involved at every step of the way, and broadly speaking, his ideas, I am words, you know. There is some overlap and crossover and a lot of it's very collaborative. We actually just talk things out and you often can't pinpoint, oh, that was a him idea, that was a me idea. It's just, we sat down, we talked and we just added layers and layers and layers and layers and layers together. It's a really fabulous process. But in regards to this specific work, he's already been massively helpful. So in my last update, I told you that I had a magic system uh, the fact that it was runes was entirely his idea. I went to him going, I need to figure out my magic system, and gave him a few parameters. He started spitballing ideas, and it was runes was the one that I'm like, oh yes, I like that, because I know I, I don't really remember which parameters I gave him now, but I think things like I wanted to have a magic system that could be, you could have like prepared spells that got triggered, by someone who is not necessarily a particularly powerful mage and I did want or I'd been thinking I think of the idea of having like tattoos 
like magic tattoos and then he's like well runes fulfills that purpose and I'm like that's genius because he's the kind of creative collaborator who you can give him parameters and he'll spit out like five or six ideas and like 95% of the time I've always gone oh I like that one I'll pick that one and on the very very rare occasions when I haven't gone with one of his ideas it's always been enough to trigger stuff in my own mind but yeah he's um <laughs> seriously if you ever need uh, like an ideas person message me and I'll hit you up and hit, look, hit you up with James hit you up with James that does not make sense I will link you up with James oh whatever who cares about the words what I just needed to say is that already I mean like I said this work is not a full-on collaboration but it is really great to have someone who I can go to when I'm in a tricky spot who will give me ideas that work really well I'll also talk about this specific bit in the next video probably, but I'm at the moment writing some kind of tricky scenes and he, he read one of them for me. It was only about like, you know, not even an entire, you know, page in Word, but he read it, gave me some very valuable feedback, which I've already started implementing and just, yeah, I just really wanted to say that it's really, really nice <laughs> having a partner who is a really helpful and talented collaborator and also he deserves a shout out he's already been helping me credit where credit's due and some of the credit is due to that guy i mean he's not obviously here that's a pillow but you know what i mean so in terms of actual writing progress uh with this book itself i haven't really developed the plot much more than when i did the last update i'm hoping that when i do start filming my next update vlog i will try and condense this thing down to a bit of a summary so I can actually start that next vlog with a whole blurb, effectively. Won't probably the be, be the best blurb, blurb, and it will be subject to change, but you know, still a blurb. But in terms of progress I've made so far, I actually have 15 chapters outlined. That's per my previous description of what an outline is. Nine of those are just quick single lines telling me what those chapters needs to be and whose POV. I'm writing from. Two of them are fully complete chapters and then four chapters I have some of the content written. With those four chapters, um, two of them are pretty damn close to being complete and two are just a lot more scrappy, but all in all I'm really happy with my progress, especially given that this was never going to be a hugely long book in my mind. I did want to keep it rather more simple and straightforward, so 15 chapters is like two-thirds of the whole thing. I'll do another like five to ten chapters and that'll probably be the um, start of the story because I've got sort of from the middle to the end all planned out so I'm kind of like oh oh this is uh coming along a lot faster than I planned and I mean hey I'm, I'm not complaining progress is great I'm very very happy but you know, <laughs> it's taking me a bit by surprise how well this is going. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep working at it. I'm hosting another writing day in a couple of weeks, so if I don't film an update for the next installment of this vlog series um, before then, I'll definitely film one on that day. I will probably be slightly tipsy again because we still have a lot of alcohol left from last time. <laughs> what can I say? It, it makes the whole thing fun. But yeah, seriously, thank you so much for watching this. If you have actually watched the whole thing, or even if you've watched parts of it, I really appreciate it because I'm making this all up as I go along. Not just the story, but the process of vlogging the whole thing. But like I've said several times, I would find it fascinating to watch this. So I hope you've enjoyed it too. And it hasn't been too much of me just being like rambling, but oh well, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Let me know in the comments if you did like anything in particular I did here or if you want more information on any specific aspect of the writing process because I would absolutely love to give you the content that you want not just me sitting and talking to a camera going yay I wrote words <laughs> well, because I want this to be more informative than that but yeah enough about me um <laughs> I'm gonna go and well I guess write some more so I can update you some more Wow, that's a really, really awkward outro, Rolly, but oh well. Awkwardness aside, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, bye-bye!